We've talked about rewards, but what happens when rewards begin to shape our behavior? Well, it can create something called behavioral momentum. We tend to respond favorably to rewards, and we also have a natural human tendency of a resistance to change. And there are some examples of how this can create behavioral momentum. For many of us, video games are a very simple example of this. We tend to do what works and what gives us those rewards in play over and over and over again through the context of a video game. This can be seen just as easily in our day-to-day -day lives, either in positive ways by repeatedly going to social gatherings because we enjoy the response we get from them, or the activities in our lives that we receive a good reward out of and enrich our lives, but also in negative ways, and addictions can show very good examples of negative ways in which the feedback cycle can affect our lives. And of course this can happen in role-playing games. The first time you kill a monster and get the treasure and the experience points, you might well start looking for the next monster. As well as I've mentioned before, due to the complex nature of role-playing games, rewards can be harder to define, such as a critical success energizing the group. And as well, the spotlight and the story goals of the characters as they're seen through play can sometimes be controlled by the GM, but that's not always the case. But of course, it's not just rewards. We could also be avoiding a negative effect. Now, that might not always be considered as fun from the player's point of view, although it may be, it could also allow the GM to avoid a power creep or an escalation of the rewards that they need to give throughout the game. This leads us pretty well into the concept of behavioral contrast. How behavioral contrast works is that a reward that may have been sufficient earlier in a game, after you've received a much greater reward, does not seem like it will satisfy the same player. Back in 2006, Ron Edwards put out a rather controversial statement on a subject related to behavioral momentum. Specifically, he suggested that, st that playing the same types of stories repeatedly can brain damage the players. The routine human capacity for understanding, enjoying, and creating stories is damaged in this fashion by storytelling role-playing as promulgated through many role-playing games of a specific type. Essentially what Ron is saying is that playing exclusively in a specific fashion prevents you from learning other methods. Now, this is backed up by some fact. We know that we form memories more strongly by reusing over and over the same neural pathways. But this theory is not exactly proven. And it does go against a common belief that if you're having fun, you're not doing it wrong. Now, there are some practical uses for these theories. For example, we know that we can get players to push harder by randomizing rewards. We know that we can get players to continue indefinitely by combining strategies to create strong behavioral momentum. Although, if you do this, you are kind of socially manipulating your players, which I personally would not consider to be ethical. You can also get people to quit by a motivation drop or decrease in rewards. And as I've discussed, due to the nature of rewards in role-playing games, this might not necessarily be easy. However we look at it, behavioral momentum has always been an important factor in games. Whether you want to encourage or discourage that is up to you.